This podcast is part of the Planet Broadcasting Network. Visit planetbroadcasting.com for more podcasts from our great mates. Hello and welcome to another episode of Do Go On. My name is Dave Warnicke and I'm here, as always, with Matt Stewart and Jess Perkins. Well done for introducing Introducing Matt first. Thank you. Because he's very really important. he's really counting these days. Very important. That's three <laughs> <laughs> out of six months. Oh, no, three out of twenty six. Twenty three yeah. to go. That was just you were just showing off your math skills there. I would also like to point out that I nailed the the intonation mm. of Dave's intro there. Yeah, I think you did. Fantastic. I've listened to it a hundred and eighty something times. 85. Six five. Well, yeah, I mean, you don't have to listen to every episode, of course. I don't. Yeah. <laughs> I don't listen to this trash. There's a few episodes Dave wasn't here where I filled in pretty pretty well. I yeah. Think, now you also nailed the intonation. Yeah. Yes. If I'm saying that correctly. Yes. No, it's actually introduction. <laughs> yes. Thank but you. Close. Yeah, nice try. <laughs> hey, somebody explain how the show works. Well, how the show works is there's three of us here. I think we're all aware of that. And uh, we take it in turns to research a topic and then bring – that research back to the others and tell them all about it. The topic could be anything. It could be Dave's water bottle there. It could be that cord in the corner. <laughs> it could be Jess's nose. It could be anything at all. Mm-hmm. And um, I'm really happy for my water bottle. This week, well, I mean, they're just some of the things that I pulled out of my imagination, but it could really be anything. I want right. my nose to finally get the attention it deserves. Mm. Uh, but the suggestions nearly always come from listeners. And this week I'm doing a report on a topic that has been suggested by a listener. Uh, and we get on the topic with a question. This week's question is, which 20th century serial killer was dubbed the Butcher of Paris, the Demonic Ogre, <gasps> and Dr. Satan, amongst other things, by oh. the French media? That is oh. an incredible set of titles. Yeah. And I, we haven't done a serial killer for so long. I gave, well, because I, I noticed that we've done a fair few entertainment type topics lately. So yeah. I gave the Patreons a few non um, entertainment topics. And yeah, this one won out. It was pretty close. Another one was up there was the Stonewall Riots, which I've put up a couple of times. Yeah. Well, well, that feels like inevitably we will do it, but um, it just got pipped again. Beaten by the Parisian Ripper. Uh, no, that, yeah, I guess that probably is. I imagine his, someone's called him that as well. Anyway, you've, you've not heard of this. I hadn't heard of this guy. His no, name's no. Marcel Petiot, or it's, it's French, probably a silent T in there, Petio. Do either of you speak French? Oh, we. Oui. Oui, oui. Yep. Oh. I'm going to say Marcel <laughs> Petiot with apologies, or mm. Petiot. Um, and this was suggested just by one listener, Jamie Svet. Jamie Svet. Thanks, Jamie Svet. Bloody great name, Jamie Svet. Great, which is a great name. Svet. This is the little um, description that got people's attention. It has death, Nazis, French accents, and ridiculous shenanigans. <laughs> All the things we love here at Do Go On. They've described um, him as like Turkman Bashi, but a serial murderer. <laughs> Whoa. Yeah. Which I'm not sure if it's entirely right, but that's, yeah, pretty close. There's cool. definitely. There's no salt, but... Um, oh, I'm out. Anyway, let us begin. Uh, Marcel Petiot. Should, do, do you want to just... I just want you to tell me yay or nay. Yeah, I mean... What's the spelling there? P-E-T-I-O-T. Petiot. Petiot. Okay, yeah, let's... Just call I, him Marcel, I'll do a I bit of, Yeah, Marcel Petiot uh, <laughs> was born on the 17th of January, 1897 in France in a place called... <laughs> Something like that. Uh, to parents Felix Petiot and Marthe Bourdon. Uh, according to <laughs> Britannica, Petiot was unusually intelligent as a child but exhibited severe behavioural problems in school and was expelled several times before completing his education. Huh. He was a troubled kid, showing violent and sexual tendencies from a young age. At one point, he fired his dad's gun in his classroom when he was just 11 years old. In another incident that same year, <laughs> he propositioned another student for sex. He's 11. At 11, yeah. 
I mean, we all develop at different times, sure. That's right. I mean, I didn't fire my dad's gun until I was 17 years old. Yeah, right? and that's okay. There's no shame in that. 11 seems a little young. Fire, fire the gun? Yeah. Mm. Either, uh, either gun? You've got to remember it was a different time. It was a different you know? time. It was the 1800s. Yeah. I mean, they only lived at 12, so you make, make the most <laughs> yeah, of it. Right. Yeah, he was a grown man. He had three <laughs> jobs by that point. Yeah. Uh, so uh, a few years later, he was caught robbing a post box and charged with theft and damaging public property. He underwent psychiatric evaluation and was found to be mentally unfit to stand trial. They were like, why would anyone rob a post box? <laughs> There's something wrong here. He's like punching it, like, give me your, mo- give me your money. And <laughs> it's like, what are you doing? <laughs> so the charges were, dro- were dropped. Right, okay. He couldn't stand trial. Well, they, they deemed him not fit to. Yep. Right. He served in the French army during World War One. Okay. Why let him into the army then? He uh, likes firing guns. Yeah, he, he had he had uh, already been in trouble everywhere he'd been, but I guess yeah they needed soldiers. Um, so he signed up in January of 1916. The following year, he was wounded in action, and while being treated, he was busted stealing army blankets and morphine amongst other things. So he's he's building a blanket fort. Yeah, <laughs> the- he's cold <laughs> and a bit of a klepto. What do you call kleptomaniac? Mm-hmm. Is that right? You can't stop stealing, yeah. Yeah. Um, and, yeah, the, the army blankets, he was charged for this, but the charges were again dropped due uh, to the results of a psychiatric evaluation. Right, but did they send him back out to the front line anyway? Uh, well, so according to this website I quote a little bit today, it's called cultnation.com, but it's spelled with a V instead of a U. Oh, yeah, cool, like churches. Kvalt. The band. Uh, Not the word churches. Oh, right. I know how that's spelled. Okay? I know. I know. You're both looking at me like I don't know. She doesn't know. I know. I don't think she knows. Do you want to hear it in a sentence? Yes, please. Churches. What a place. (laughs) Churches. Mm -hmm. Plural. Comma. What a place. What a place. Mm -hmm. Singular. Yep. Okay, now spell it. Any further questions? C-H-V. Yes. R C H Yes X. No, you missed a V. Ah Double V. Anyway, according, according to Cult Nation, he was diagnosed with mental disequilibrium, neurasthesia, neurasthenia. Is that two separate ones? No. It's <laughs> <laughs> a second go at the same one. Uh, mental depression, melancholia, uh, obsessions and phobias. It's a, a bit of a a mixed bag of diagnoses. Did they have any idea what they were doing back then? I'm not sure, yes. I guess it's the early 1900s. They must have had some idea. There's not a lot of terms in there that are thrown around all that much now. Um, This saw him being sent to a psychiatric ward for treatment before being returned to the front in 1918. (laughs) I wonder what kind of treatment they would have done as well. Oh, wow. They were that desperate that they were just like, get back out there. You'll probably die anyway, let's be honest. If somebody hands you a gun, just make sure you're aiming at the enemy, yeah, would you? shoot the right way. That's, yeah, he, oh, that's so irresponsible. He did not take that advice. For everyone. I'm not, I'm, anyway, I, I just, I was going to be like jump to his defense and then I remembered it was a long time ago and uh, I know he's a serial killer, so I probably won't defend him too much. Mm, I reckon the source of his killing is the fact that they took him away from his blanket fort. Yeah. Uh. Man, how good are blanket forts? Love that stuff. A few pillows in there. Oh, hello. We bought a new doona recently, so like a bigger one. So now we have spare doonas. And now I've just had the idea that I have the resources for a blanket fort. Oh. Do you want to come over? Yeah. You got a couple <laughs> of chairs, you'll build a little yes! bit of structure. Oh, a little best. emergency exit so you can escape if unwanted people come Fart, over. If someone farts. If Matt farts. <laughs> I don't fart. Do you not? No. You should get that checked. You don't fart outside of a blanket fort. Gentlemen (laughs) never fart. (laughs) What was your advice there, Bob? Hmm? You said always make sure the gun's pointing at the enemy. (sighs) Yeah. Well, he didn't do that because when he was sent back (laughs) to the front line, uh, he literally shot himself in the foot. Literally. Literally, because it's also a phrase. You can shoot yourself yes. in the foot. But he literally did he it. He literally did it. Like literally? <laughs> did he like literally do he it? He literally did it. Oh, my God, literally. Um, and despite the continuing issues, 
They still didn't send him home. Fucking um, hell. He was given a few weeks of leave to recover and then transferred to a different regiment to continue fighting in the war. No. I guess in, in their, it was their idea that was like, you know, he, it's not, he's having trouble. Yeah. It's probably just the people he's around. Yeah. Send him to a different part of the front. He might, might just have... click with some other people mm. a bit better. Yeah. Feel more at home a couple of miles that way. Yeah. I get that though. You know, workplaces are all about the people you work with, True. you know. So sometimes it's just like it's just a personality gelling thing. Yeah. You know, I sometimes get that. Sometimes you shoot yourself in the foot. It's literally. Literally. <laughs> Most of the time it's figurative. Literally. Every now and then. It's literally. But are we thinking that he did it on purpose or was he just a terrible shot? I think he might have done it on purpose. But there was enough because it's one of those stories where it's, a, it's pretty old and it's there's no doesn't seem to be a definitive yeah. take on it. There was one source actually said that he exploded a, a grenade on his own foot. <laughs> so it's quite different. <laughs> it is they, quite different. And then they just send him away for a couple of weeks. Yeah. Because that, that seems like it would be hard to recover from. Yeah. I don't think you'd have a foot. No. They'd probably still ask you to fight, though. Look, you've only got one foot left. That's more than some. Yeah. So. Which is true. Yeah. Back in the First World War, I imagine. Yeah, get back out there. You're uh, all right. You're fine. Towards the end of the war, he was again sent for psychiatric evaluation. <sighs> and according to Cult Nation, his diagnosis uh, meant that he was finally discharged from duty on disability. In fact, the report given to the military recommended that Petio uh, be committed to an asylum. Instead, he was admitted to an accelerated education program set up for veterans where he earned a medical degree and began to uh, his practice as a physician. What the fuck? Oh, that really took an unexpected turn. We think you should lock him away. And they're, and they're like, nah, he should be one of you. <laughs> <laughs> I want your job. All right. Well, the, uh, according to... the. Uh, as all that's interesting.com puts it like this instead of being committed to an asylum as recommended, he interned at one while attending medical school. <laughs> oh my God. Wow. That's so dumb. Yeah. That's really, really dumb. I reckon it's one of those things you give someone a bit of responsibility like that and they'll step up. Yeah. I reckon that from now on, he's on the straight and narrow. He's like, all right, you let me be a doctor. I'll be a good person. Is this right, Matt? Yeah, Matt, is this right? Is this the end of the story? I've got really good intuition. Did he just marry a nice lady? They settled down, had some kids. He died of old age. Are you related to this guy? Uh, You do have a bit of Swiss Italian. Yeah. He could have gone across the border a couple of times. Yeah, a couple of borders. Yeah, and then settled down. Is this what happened? Are you just telling us your ancestry? I'm just telling you the story of how I grew up. Great. Oh. No, it does not. It doesn't end well. Sorry. Fuck. Oh. But, I, you know, he's a serial killer. Yeah, I know. We were just hoping that maybe. Oh, I didn't know you meant that literally. Yeah, literally. Oh, I Shot thought you meant he's a serial foot. killer. <laughs> All right. He's a. <laughs> With the ladies. Wow. What a bit of a serial killer. Lady killer. Yeah, but he's actually a killer. Yeah, just a killer. Yeah, he just... kills the bad vibes. <laughs> <Yeah>. Woo! <laughs> he's a party starter. <laughs> Which one is it, Matt? We're all dancing, but no um, one can tell. Well, I guess I, I think we've found with a lot of bad people that we've talked about, they're often um, you know seen as being charismatic and whatever. And and I get I'm assuming that something like that is how he went from, you know, people saying he needs treatment. To him ended up going. It's like he talked his way into getting a <laughs> degree and said, "No, I reckon I'll just. Why don't I just be a doctor?" Like, yeah, you're right. No, Why don't point. you just be a doctor? Is, is yeah, I'm not a... sure how he went about it, but yeah, it must have been something like that. A bit of a Hannibal Lecter type, I'm imagining. It's like very, very smart, but very, very insane. Yeah. <laughs> uh, he obtained his medical degree in 1921 and established a practice in the town of Villeneuve. During his time as a doctor there, some of his dodgy practices included purposefully prescribing his patients addictive substances. Uh, substances as well as secretly applying for state medical assistance for many of his patients, meaning that he received payment from both the patient and the state each time he treated them, according to Cult Nation. Oh. So he's, that's, yeah. That's I mean, that's of, just a bit clever. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> wrong, the, wrong. Just a little bit of like, fraud. A bit of fraud. I mean, the prescribing addictive substances for no reason is pretty bad. Yeah. Yeah, yeah you're playing with people's lives. <laughs> yeah, but they're having a good time. The article continues saying, he began an affair with the daughter of one of his patients in 1926. Uh, 
woman named Louise Delavue. Uh, she disappeared in suspicious circumstances during their relationship. There were accusations leveled at him by his neighbours, uh, saying that they saw the doctor putting a large trunk in his car, one that looked a lot like a trunk filled with an unidentified woman's body parts <laughs> that the police pulled out of the Yon River a few weeks later. Oh. When you said trunk, I imagined a tree trunk for some reason. No, I imagine like, like trunk. the trunk of a car. He's putting a right. trunk in the trunk. In a trunk. And they're like, that's suspicious. Yeah. <laughs> Why would you do he that? He can't close the boot. He can't close the putting thing. Put a boot in the boot. Yeah, he's putting a boot in the boot. Uh, so Right, so they did find body parts in a trunk. Yes. That looked just like the trunk he put in the trunk. According to the Cult Nation article, police claimed that this was a coincidence and Delaview was officially logged as a runaway. Never found... Just uh, is this like pre DNA testing? Yeah, yeah right. <laughs> yeah. DNA is like what is that? Like two thousand and six? <laughs> yeah, yeah. When NCIS started. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I wasn't sure if it was NCIS or CSI. Uh, no, no DNA and CSI. Right. Nah, just Not a until lot of CSI bl- Miami. Just yeah. a lot of blue light. Yeah, and CSI right. Miami ripping off. They NCIS. could just they could right. just find cum. Yeah. yeah. They did that a lot. They turned the black light on and went, oh, do not look at my pants. <laughs> oh, dear. Oh, no. Uh-huh. Looks yeah. like the cum is on my pants. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> Sunglasses on Horatio. <laughs> Looks like the cum is on my pants. I love those intros are so great. Yeah. Or should I say, Yeah! <laughs> I really want to know. It was never proven, but many believe Delaview was Petio's first victim. Oh, that's Uh, so good. You'd assume that all the controversy that had plagued him would mean it would be impossible for Petio to enter politics. What the fuck? (laughs) No. Yeah, if you did assume that, you would be wrong. Because he ran for mayor of Villeneuve the same year that Delaview went missing. Oh, my God. Well, I, I, honestly, is it a bit like, well, if I was a murderer, would I run for mayor? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it was it, like, that's a good that's point. A, if I'd killed my girlfriend, would I be putting my face out there as mayor? Everyone's just like, well played. <laughs> yeah, he is good. Because I reckon if I'd killed my girlfriend, I'd be like laying low. Yeah, I want to lay low. But Wouldn't... he's he that's just really running sick. for mayor. Wow. He's innocent. And I'm voting for him. Oh, you are? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, he's got my vote. You oh. can't prove shit. I think he's all right. <laughs> Am I going to regret that? Yeah, I of course. I, mean, I already yeah, do, of course. yeah. <laughs> of course you will. I hope, I hope you will. <laughs> Still at the end, I'm like, no, nah, he's all right. One of his tactics um, during the election, apparently, according to the All, all That's Interesting article, was uh, hiring someone to cause a commotion during a debate uh, with his opponent which caused his opponent to get flustered. <laughs> oh, my God. That is good. What a bad, bad man. That is good is stuff. Is that the worst thing he's ever done? Uh, no. Oh. <laughs> no. We're in the midst of an election here. Why have none of them tried no, that? just try to cause a bit of commotion. And just fluster them. You'll fluster your opposition, I'll tell you. Just maybe the egg, them. maybe the one of the the egg boy or egg girl was actually... A flusterer. Flusterer hired by the opposition. I think that, that could be true. Yeah. Mm. Um, no, this makes sense now. Uh, whatever his tactics were, they worked as he won. What? He became the mayor. He flustered all 16 of his opponents. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody questioned why there were so many commotions yeah. at the debate. At every rally except his. Yeah. And he's always like, oh, commotion, this is where I thrive. Yeah. <laughs> Keep making noise. I love it. <laughs> I've killed and I'll kill again. I've said too much. (laughs) Uh, As with the rest of his life, though, his time as mayor was full of trouble. Uh, The trouble included being accused of stealing taxpayers' money and even cans of oil from the train depot. (laughs) He was doing big and small crime. He just put oil in his boot? Yeah, I guess so. Back into the trunk. Back in the trunk. I'm just thinking, when were cars... Like, he would have been an early adopter for cars, right? What are we talking? Nineteen twenties? It was when were the when were cars getting real popular, Dave? Well, it was kicking off, but have we actually mentioned the car though? Well, the, yeah, the him boot putting the boot in the trunk. Oh no, they're talking about a chest of drawers. Type but trunk. wasn't that into a trunk? Yeah, putting a large trunk into his car. 
Oh, wow. Maybe he's an early adopter. <laughs> or he put it into the back of his oh, fourth-drawn carriage. You just made my head um, get hot. I'm like, wait, did I imagine <laughs> the thing that I said? Have you got hot head? I got hot head, man. I'm a real hot head. <laughs> you know what us fiery redheads are like? We'll go off at a drop of a hat. All right, mate. Don't no. drop my hat. At this point, you're Auburn. Auburn, you know? Like, you're not, uh, you're not a fiery redhead. You're Auburn. I'm a fiery red face. At the moment, yes. <laughs> Are you okay? Yeah. Um. So, so he's as mayor. He's stealing cans of oil from the what train kind station. Of oil? I guess olive oil. Yeah, olive oil. <laughs> Extra virgin. <laughs> yeah, like the good, the shit? good stuff. Yeah. Oh, okay, fair. Because that that's is expensive. Like tiny cans. Yeah, you get uh, like a one liter bottle. Sure, it'll last you a while. But it's not bloody cheap. He's oh. getting the ones that are flavored, like the chili one. Yeah. yeah. And a bit those. of uh, what is that little ducker? Yep. Ducker? Yep. Oh, no, that's a word I've never said out loud. I think it's Duka. 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 Unless I'm wrong. Well. Just, we just put out three options there. And yeah. One of them's one's right. right. <laughs> one of us got it. I'm sure. I'm sure we got it. He was. Ends up being Duka. <laughs> so he's, um, so he's, he, the klepto stuff never goes away. He's always. Once a klepto, always a klepto. Always be stealing thieving. oil. Yeah. To build uh, an oil fort. <laughs> It's always forts with this guy. <laughs> Imagine an oil fort. Oh, oh. Slippery. Isn't that but it, like in the in the um old the Middle Ages or whatever, wasn't oil used in forts a bit? Hot oil? Was that a real thing? They poured hot oil on the enemies? From yeah, yeah, from the top. Yeah, yeah. There's little holes and So stuff. maybe he's learning from history. Hmm. Yeah, he's building a fort made fully of oil. He no misunderstood though. The bricks were still made of bricks. Yeah. <laughs> he's just heating up oil. No one's getting inside of this can. <laughs> um, so he was suspended from his mayoral duties. I should say we say mayor, but I think other places say mayor or mayor. Do they? <laughs> I think in America they say mayor. No, they say mayor. I think in the mayor of New York (laughs) City. Don't they say mayor? No, it's mayor. (laughs) Mayor. (laughs) Are you thinking of John Mayor? John Mayer. They call him John Mayer. Oh, we call him John Mayer. We call him John Mayer. Yeah. Mayer. It's Mayer It's everywhere. always Mayer. Is it always Mayer? It's always no, Mayer. I, but I know what you mean. Sometimes in the South, if there's an accent, you could hear <laughs> Mayer. Mayer. <laughs> Mayer Barnaby. Well, I do protest, Mr. <laughs> Mayer. Well, I do say. Yeah, you're just doing an accent. Yeah. I am a Southern belle, sir. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think anyone's been confused <laughs> up until this point. Well, it's possible the they thought I was talking about a woman horse. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he ran to be the town's woman horse, the only one, so all the boy horses got to fuck him. <laughs> this mayor makes me feel like a cat on a hot tin roof. <laughs> Uh, sometimes I forget Dave studied drama because he really can transform a scene, can't he? I'm a southern male. A mayor. I tips my hat. Every, everyone's everyone's on board with mayor. So he was suspended from his Who? mayoral or ma- mayoral mayoral duties, <laughs> his mayoral duties, and once again charged. This time, though, he was found guilty and sentenced to spend three months in jail. This decision was appealed and, <laughs> no, and subsequently no. overturned. Oh, my God. How many second chances is that already? I think, it, yeah, it's, it's it's three, four, it's going to be four, five. Yeah. Four times he's been evaluated and they've gone, ah, uh, he meant well. Yeah, all right. He's stealing oil. Uh, so amongst all this, in 1927, he married a woman named Georgette LeBleu. Oh. Georgette, you poor woman. Le bleu. Le bleu. Le bleu. It was le bleu. all a le bleu. Le bleu. <laughs> le bleu. What can I say? <laughs> um, le bleu. They had a son the following year. Uh, honeymoon baby. And I love a honeymoon baby. What's his son's name? Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. You're into that. The royal baby. Oh, I mean, yeah. they haven't even been married a year. Uh, or close to. Shotgun wedding, I tell you. Yeah, I tell you what. You no, what. Dave, I'm, I don't know. I, it was just a honeymoon baby, like within a few months of them being wed. Their son was named Gerhardt. 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 That's the first name. Yeah. That's a beautiful name. Gerhardt, yeah. I really like I actually genuinely Yeah, it's like a good that, name. I it? think it's a good name. Gerhardt is a cool name. Um, after the charges were overturned, he returned to his 
mayoral duties. <laughs> what? They let him back they in. They let him back in. He was so apparently he was so popular. I think when he stepped down, the rest of the council resigned as well. Like if he's out, we're out. I think so. That's dumb. <laughs> That's somewhere. Yeah, they like he was I mean, he was obviously always Yeah. He was getting votes and he was people liked him, even though he was clearly Yeah, it's real confusing. Uh confusing sort of character. Um so he returned returned to the gig as mayor, but accusations of theft continued to be thrown at him till he was finally officially booted from the office in nineteen thirty one. Right, so he's sort of yo-yoing a bit and then in and out. Yeah. Ex- yeah, exactly. Uh, around a month after he was booted, he sought election as the district's representative in uh, the general council. He won, becoming the youngest man to do so at about 33 years of age, 33, 34. Well, how? Do they not look at his record that he's been kicked out of as mayor twice? Yeah, I think, and this feels like, I think he's so mayor's obviously the local... That's the city. Mm. Man, I think this is more of a, he's going for a seat in a more national. And what's the thing? title? Uh, the General Council. Can you say that in a proper southern voice? General Council. <laughs> <laughs> well, just in case you didn't know what Matt was trying yeah. to say. Uh, whilst in the position, he was accused of stealing electricity, <laughs> which led to him being <laughs> fined. Where was he putting it? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> In his Save fort. He was making an electrical fort. <laughs> in his fort. He put, first he put it in his trunk and he drove it to his castle. <laughs> um, and, yeah, that led to him being fined and booted from that position as well. I mean, mate, you've got it pretty sweet, surely. You're getting paid all right. I don't fully understand how you steal electricity. Yeah, I guess it, I guess he's a really long um, extension lead. <laughs> really, really he's long. He's plugged it in. Yeah. Uh, to like the next door neighbors, next door neighbors, and then he's just a long lead into his place, and he's like got six toasters going. <laughs> yeah, he doesn't need them around the clock. Yeah, he just he's... he takes the bread out and throws it out. Yeah, I imagine he's not even putting bread in; he's just putting it down, it popping <laughs> back down. <laughs> he stood there for seventeen hours once, yeah. just doing that, and nobody realized that something wasn't quite right yeah, in his until head. the electricity bill came through, and it was like ten grand. Yeah, and his neighbors were like. Hang on a sec. Hang on a this sec. is enough to power six toasters yeah. for seventeen. I thought hours. I was smelling. I thought I was having a stroke. I was smelling burnt toast. But it was just the neighbour. <laughs> Unbelievable! <laughs> it's, it's ridiculous. Uh, well, anyway, he lost his job because of all that toast. Wow. Um, toast is never worth it. Yeah. Losing is that your, your job. Motto? <laughs> no, I love toast. Toast so good. I've toast. I got really got to cut back. Oh, yeah. Edgemont toast, I love it. Oh, I'll go a peanut butter girl myself. Oh, yum yum yum! I'm a, I'm a baked bean. Oh, yeah. Oh, on come toast. on, Dave. Come on, Dave. I'm polite company now. You know this is going out. People are going to hear this. People are going to know. Oh. You're going to say that. Oh. Do you want me to edit that out? <laughs> Please, no. I want everyone to know. I'm proud of it. Okay. You I baked shouldn't beans. Be. Oh. There's going to be backlash about this. Yeah. Well, uh, at Dave Warnicky, get in contact. Oh. Dave. I don't, don't do open it. a dialogue about it. No, nah, do I wouldn't it. if I were you. I wouldn't. He'll probably just try and make you eat baked beans oh. on toast. They call me the bean boy. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Stop trying to make that catch on. <laughs> we are not going to call you bean boy. You're not going to. No one's got you bean boy. Please tweet me at bean boy. Come <laughs> 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 look up if that's a real account. I'm sure it is. I'm sure it, it is. It has to be. If not, I will be taking you. You could be bean boy one. <laughs> <laughs> bean Boy Zero One, <laughs> the Bean Boy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the lizard man also oh, loved beans. Oh, he loved butter beans. Oh, he loves butter. What do you got to rem- remember about the lizard man? He loves butter beans. <laughs> Damn, at Bean Boy is taken by someone who's who hasn't tweeted since 2013. Oh, man. that's bullshit. Take, Low it rac- take that. Take it off him. Take it. Low take raconteur it. formidable. Oh, he's won me back. <laughs> That's the description. What if? What about the Bean Boy? And if it is, I'll oh, set it up. Fuck the Bean Boy's taken. <laughs> what about uh, Le Bean Boy? Yeah, oh, Le good. Bean Boy. Le Bean Boy, surely. What about la 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 Bean Boy? La 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 Bean Boy. La 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 at Le Bean Boy is not taken. All right, I will be setting that up. I will be tweeting. Exclusively about my be- baked bean meal. So if you are inter- interested, follow me at La Bean Boy. La La Bean Boy. La La La, 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 la Bean Boy. First post should be a video of Jess singing La 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 La, la Bean Boy. Okay. La 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 la, la Bean Boy. La 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 la, la Bean Boy. No, d- no, you can't start now. Do it now, quick. La 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 La, la Bean Boy. 
La 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 bean boy. La bean boy. Da 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 bean boy. La la bean boy. La bean boy. Thanks, everyone. So just follow at Le Bean Boy <laughs> for exclusively baked bean related tweets. Wow. This and if I get a, get a million subscribers uh, or followers, I will. Um, eat a bean. I'll eat, <laughs> I'll eat one bean. I'll eat, no, have, I'll eat an entire cold can live. Oh, How about that? Yeah. I'll do it. Just all it will take is one million followers. <laughs> is that all? <laughs> is that all? That's all we have to do. How many followers have you got on your actual account? Uh, slightly less than one million, okay. so I will uh, we'll have to try and make this more popular than I am. <laughs> How does I that feel? It's got a life on its, of its own, though, Labine Boy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I will be uh, selling T-shirts, <laughs> Labine Boy. <laughs> I love Labine. Slave to Labine. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, God, it hurts. Dave, do you want to tell us about that uh, great new product? Ah, yes. Thank you, Matt. I just want to say that this episode of Do Go On is brought to you and the good people at home by Skillshare. Ah, Skillshare. Yeah, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community for creators with more than 25,000 classes in design, business and more. On Skillshare, you'll discover countless ways to fuel your curiosity, creativity and career. You can take classes in social media marketing, mobile photography, creative writing, even illustration. There's so many, so many classes on there. So many. But what I like as well is it's not just like really big things like how to run a business and stuff like that. It can be little things too. And one that I want to do is about happy house plants, caring for your plants because I don't have a lot of light in my house and my plants keep dying and I need to improve that skill rather than just ignoring it. Yeah. <laughs> Getting new plants. That course is trending at the moment. So is this one, which I think I find interesting, negotiating with clients as well as pricing your work. Ooh. Real good for freelancers and stuff. Yeah, for sure. It's hard to know your worth really, isn't it? Yeah, that's a great one. I think, yeah, people, especially in you hear that in entertainment and stuff, freelancers chronically underprice themselves. Yeah. Not me. I, I quote too high <laughs> and very rarely get work. So I should probably take that. You should also take that. Yeah, yeah, get a better idea of how to. I think it'll help you in either way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there is literally, like, I feel like you think of a thing that you want to be able to do. Yeah. There's a course on here. Say a thing. Uh, um, oh, God, you put me on the spot. Origami. Origami, yep, done. Next. Knitting. Knitting. Yeah, mate. I think there's knitting. Oh, yeah, there is knitting. There's um, so much knitting. What do you want to learn? Cozy house socks, an introduction to sock knitting. That's the next thing I was going to say. Yes, it's there. There's, there's, there are over 25,000 classes there, so there's so many things. And if you would like to join the millions of students already learning on Skillshare today, we have a special offer just for our listeners. You can get two months of Skillshare for free. That's right, Skillshare is offering Do Go On's listeners two months of unlimited access to over 25,000 classes for free. So you can knit, you can paint, you can cook, you can draw, you can play musical instruments, do it all. And to do that, sign up, go to Skillshare.com slash do go. That is D O G O. Again, go to skillshare.com slash D O G O. Do go to start your two months now. One more time, finally, skillshare.com slash do go. And do go on to be better. One course, one final one. Knitting 101. Create a timeless snood. <laughs> I love a snood. What does that mean? <laughs> I love a timeless snood. It's a, it's like a scarf hood kind of thing. Oh yes. Yeah. <laughs> and it's timeless. I might knit myself Comfy. one. You could wear that at any time. You get a time machine. And you're like, which snood do I take? You got to take the timeless one. You don't know where you're gonna end up. <laughs> <laughs> you want to create a scene. Someone's like, what's this future man wearing? Oh, and I thank God he's just wearing a timeless snood. <laughs> <laughs> he's probably of of our current day. <laughs> You're wearing a snood around the French Revolution. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we should get back to this serial killer. All right. Thanks, Skillshare. So he was done for stealing electricity, got the boot, and I guess at that point he realised maybe he'd used up all the goodwill he had in Villeneuve. So he moved to Paris with his wife and his son in 1933. And there he continued to practice as a doctor and again enjoyed a good reputation. But his criminal activities continued. 
unabated. <sighs> he built a new medical practice at 66 Rue Calmartin in Paris. What did he build the practice out of? Uh, he built it out of sticks. <laughs> okay. sticks. Which was a bad idea. Yeah. But I mean, it's, honestly, it is better than oil. Yeah. True. He's, he's, he's going in the right direction. Yeah, exactly. He's sure. working his way through the products. They weren't his sticks. <laughs> ah, of course they weren't. He's stealing sticks. He's, got, he's a doctor. He's got the money for sticks. So he, bu- he built a new medical practice uh, and, and also a great reputation in the community. According to an article on murder... Murderpedia. Have you seen this website? It's Murderpedia. Like, it's yeah, like, yeah, I've used Murderpedia. I'm a big fan. It's good. It's like it's like a it collates a bunch of articles on certain topics. This one is uh is really good. This is probably the best one I've found, and I it w- would have been hard not to just read this whole thing out because it's very good. But anyway, it's an article by Michael Newton, um, and in it he says. Petio promoted himself with typical zeal in Paris, offering patients a wide variety of treatments, claiming credentials both real and imaginary. <laughs> Advertisements. I've got a degree in unicorns. <laughs> well, okay, please give my head a massage. <laughs> <laughs> Advertisements described him as an intern, um, spelt I N T E R N E, at one mental hospital where he had actually been an intern. The E with a an accent on top, which means patient. So you right. take the accent off. He took the accent off, meaning he was an intern there when actually he was a patient. So he just all he had to do, and this is that was actually in the um, when uh, this was suggested by Jamie. That that was one of the things they mentioned. That is actually was pretty fascinating about it. He just took off the accent, and that changed his. Like um, I've done an internship. Yeah. Wow. Honestly. I mean, just make up a new word. Yeah, it, it, it's the whole problem here, the French language. <laughs> this whole time, <laughs> is that what's happening? Yeah. Like every time you should go to jail, but they just take off some little thing, accent or a little umlaut or whatever here, and it's like, oh, actually, no, you. sorry, did I say you had to be here? No, you get to run here. <laughs> great. great. I sorry, I missed that umlaut. <laughs> yeah. Crazy. Oh, a little bit of stirt to <laughs> flip that off, and uh, that just changes history. Okay. That's wild. Um, so the the article goes on to say, outside his home office at 66 Rue Calmartin, uh, Petio erected a brass plaque so jam-packed with phony endorsements that another physician complained to the medical association and Petio was forced to remove it. He had a brass plaque. Yep. I love that. Can you just get them? Yeah. Ooh. Yeah, my grandpa had one on his house. Really? What did it he say? He just get it. Yeah, just get it. Well, you know, it's like a dental surgeon, so doctor, blah, blah, all these, all these things, and then like Order of Australia, all this stuff underneath it. Yeah. <laughs> just next to his front door. I was like, well played. <laughs> Did he actually have an Order of Australia? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's got something like that, yeah. What? Yeah. He just he just had OAM written there, but actually. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it, yeah. Really, if you put the accent above the A. Yeah, yeah. you're That's actually it. an Order of Australian mucking about <laughs> yeah all right. so yeah quite different quite different very quite different. different but unless you look into it you wouldn't know you can be both though you can yeah. you can be a bit of a rat bag but yeah. also have the order of australia medal That's true uh before long he was in different kinds of trouble so he's already had his brass plate removed not, not what a, next what more could possibly happen that's the worst thing that could happen to a person mm. yeah. and the worst thing that's happened to him so far uh According to all that's interesting, the physician was fined 2,400 francs for his prescribing of illicit narcotics, a charge for which he would have gone to trial had the two addicts set to testify against him not appeared under mysterious, not disappeared under mysterious <laughs> circumstances shortly oh. before the trial began. Appeared would have been if they appeared Whoa. under like, mysterious smoke circumstances. Smoke bomb. <laughs> we are here. We're here. And testify. <laughs> testify. <laughs> testify. <laughs> and the, the judge no. was so like, no, nah, no, nah, not happening. <laughs> not happening. Get out. This Get is out. mysterious. <laughs> no, they did the opposite. They disappeared. Yes. Right. Smoke bomb. <laughs> They're gone. Again. Boom. I'm gone. And I'm gone. Uh, he, so both disappeared. Apparently. What are the chances? Yeah. That they both become runaways. Yeah, a couple more runaways. I yeah. would run away. Yeah, they they joined the cause. Wow. I would run away. Is that the cause? Yeah, the, the CAUSE. <laughs> Fight the power. And I, 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 I'm falling in love with. 
Hey. People should be more impressed hey. than you. That was the cause. Yeah, that, that was very good. Thank you. I was impressed, but I was busy singing. <laughs> now I'm done. And I really I needed say... you to stop <laughs> and be impressed. I was please. finished singing. I was now. impressed that Jess knew the, the bit after that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That is a song that no one has thought of for a long time. Get out of town. You get to at the end of I Would Run Away and it's like. <laughs> nah, it's a great one. You knew it. Yeah. I love the cause. Oh, you love everything Ireland. I love Ireland. Yeah. I'm wearing green right now. You are. And I, I feel like without even me saying that, some people got that vibe. Yeah. They were listening like, oh, she sounds like she's wearing green. Yeah. And they were right. They were right. Mm. What colour am I wearing, listener? Ha, trick question. He's naked. Yes. Ha, <laughs> sucked in. Matt prefers to work in the nude and we respect his choices. We don't yeah. we don't like it, but we respect it. <laughs> it just feels, I feel more of a flow. Yeah. And and we see the difference. We hear the difference. Mm. But obviously we can't look at you. No. Yeah. It's also a clear desk, which was a bad choice on our part mm. when we were furnishing this studio. The Bermuda Triangle episode is the only one I wore clothes. And I mean, I think you can hear oh, how it restrictive was an absolute that was. Mess. It was oh. a messy episode. Babados. That is the influence of pants. Yeah. Mm. Get them off. Restrict- Get them out. Restrict- <laughs> I don't want them. Get them out of here. Mm. Very restrictive of, of the vocal cords, pants. Mm. Yep. Yep. I'm <laughs> It's where some of my, my best vocal cords live. <laughs> <laughs> Regret face. <laughs> so so he kind of got away with that one. Um, he was again arrested soon after, though. It just feels like he spent most of his time being arrested. Yeah. Imagine, like, your doctor, your neighbourhood doctor, has just got the cops around all the time. He's just always been put into the back of a divvy van. They're like, <laughs> that's classic. Dr. Marcel, don't worry about him. <laughs> He'll get out of it. He'll be back. He yeah. never, he's never done anything. They do, I don't know why they're always after him. Yeah. They... How are all of these people so bad at reading other people that none of them have gone, I don't know, he just gives me the heebie-jeebies, mm. you know? Or that they don't keep records at all. Yeah, that's the thing. Obviously, he just moves to a new place and everyone's like, you seem great. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to look into you at all. He just chucks a little... Umlaut on the top yeah. of words, and it goes from saying criminal mastermind to real good guy. Yeah. <laughs> Trustworthy. It's a beautiful chap. language. Wow. It's it's just it changes. So, so tonal. So th- this time he was arrested uh, for theft again, as well as assaulting a police officer. But again, he was acquitted due to his mental fitness and was sent to spend time in a mental health facility. He was released after a couple of months, and despite there being continuing doubts from some doctors, about his mental health, he was just back out. Oh my god! Like ready to practice. What seems to happen is they go, "You are too mentally ill to go to jail. Where you should be is out there on the streets, <laughs> practicing yeah. medicine." What? What? Yeah, that doesn't make what sense. What do you mean? You, you can't go. You're too unwell to go to jail. So don't worry about it. It, it just yeah, it sounds like their system wasn't great. I mean, I, I we ought to still talk about it in Australia. Our mental health system here is, is requiring. Work a lot of work, and this is a long time. This ago. is a hundred years of ago, of course. But yeah, that's yeah. It that's... sounds like the system is it's bloody Swiss cheese. There's a lot of holes in it. That's very. There's good. a Swiss Italian coming through. Yeah, yeah. he knows. I, I'm talking cheese analogies. <laughs> 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 oh, this sounds like a Gouda story to me. I was going with Gouda. Sorry, only... I'll be brief. Everyone in the world listening had the thought of Gouda, yeah, and they yeah. all bit their tongue. Jess and me included, Dave. Jess, yeah, that Dave. is why you're the master of the puns. Uh, Jess was also going for it, can I, I just wasn't, say? I was just I a little, little quicker than you I were. didn't. Don't get all blue about it, Jess. Blue cheese. Oh, fuck off. My man. personal favourite time. I would have accepted if you said, don't get all blue cheese about it, Jess. Yeah. Then that's a funny joke. That's funny. <laughs> but okay. just saying blue about it and then saying blue cheese, my favourite cheese. Like, no, no one cares. No one cares. Well, I've got great pecorinos, so. Oh, okay. Yeah, but it definitely sounds like you're talking about your balls. <laughs> <laughs> do you reckon? I mean, I, I will admit that it's confusing because I do call my balls my pecorinos. <laughs> like, look at the pecorinos yeah. on this guy. But that's pecorinos with an umlaut. <laughs> you understand? Well, I do, Tonal. I couldn't yeah. hear that, it's could tonal. I? No, but if you yeah. see it written down, you'd understand the difference. Of course. I'm not an idiot. I'm not a pecorino. <laughs> <laughs> ah, which is something you say about idiots. Yeah. I say basically calling them Dave's balls. Check yeah. out the couple of Dave's balls over here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My balls are not intelligent. These they jokers. Are <laughs> Dave's got dumb balls. Yeah. There, we said it. Okay. Okay. 
Hey, we That's... still love you, dumb balls and all. No challenges here. The elephant in the room has been called out now, <laughs> which is what I call Dave's balls. They are quite big. <laughs> jumbo. Yeah. yeah. It's got jumbo balls. Jumbo and Dumbo. <laughs> yeah, maybe you want to argue with my friends, Jumbo and Dumbo. <laughs> <laughs> oh, please don't beat me up. Oh, I wasn't going to beat you up. I'm just going to slap you in the face with my balls. <laughs> I'm just going to down trow. Just going to teabag you. Oh, my job. Is <laughs> 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 something there? <laughs> uh, so... <laughs> is out again, back back at work. Uh, but once out, he continued committing <laughs> crimes, including tax fraud, and was again charged, and this time fined. Oh, they fined him? They fined oh, him. okay. After living in Paris for six years, he'd built up a large rap sheet. And by this stage, it was 1939. And David, I don't know if you're in, in France, pretty significant year. Because that is when the it's Second the World Saints. War <laughs> broke out. <laughs> So I thought the Saints sort of won some some sort of premiership. <laughs> no, Dave, they've never won a premiership. <laughs> they have won. Which one? 66. When? No. Oh, 39, I thought. You've not mentioned that. Um, I think I'd know if the Saints had won a premiership in 66. Okay. Uh, so, I don't think Paris was very significant to World War II, though, so it's barely worth mentioning. Okay, great. Yeah, weird that you bring it up. Mm, weird. Oh, it was mainly because the uh, Nazi Germany invaded and, and occupied Paris. Can I ask a, oh. a, an incredibly quick question? Sure. Is his wife still with him? Yes. Why? <laughs> I think she might be bit, in on it. Bit in, yeah. I don't know how much in because not many of the stories talk about it, but she definitely, as it gets worse, she was an accomplice. I think. Turn, oh. It's going to get worse. Yes. Huh. What, worse than stealing some oil? I yeah. don't believe it. I do say. Uh, so, so yeah, he's. I mean, he. I feel like every year there's been something. He's. What is it, 1939? How old's he now? He's he's early 40s, and he's been arrested a lot. Yeah, go but on. also maybe when there when you there's no charge, maybe there's not a record. I wonder, or would it just be a, a long record rap sheet of nothing released, released, released. Yeah, but overturned, like, acquitted. Like, obviously, one file because there's no like overarching system back then. So. Yeah. And then you you move you know a couple of police stations over and they just don't know right. who you are anymore. Um, mm. We move out of their jurisdiction. Yeah. Mm, mm, mm. So it's it's now World War Two. Uh, Paris has been uh, France and Paris have been invaded by Germany, and it seems that uh, Doctor Marcel Petio used the chaos of war to his benefit. He worked as a member of the resistance helping provide false medical records for French citizens who were being sent to into German labour camps. It's so basically people who, if you're picked to go into these labour camps, he would write up a thing saying actually they're unfit for these reasons and get them out of it. Oh, he's actually doing good work finally. That's right. And, um, and he also uh, treated sick workers who returned from the camps. All that's interesting is articles suggest that this was possibly just to garner public trust and admiration and that, and thus better conceal his illicit acts, mm. which increasingly involved the sale of illegal drugs. That may have worked in part, but not entirely, because in 1942 he was charged, convicted and fined for over-prescribing narcotics, something that he'd done throughout his whole career. And I, I think that's just for the cash, I guess. He's he's basically like a semi-legit drug dealer. He <laughs> He gets people addicted and then... Keeps prescribing and making money oh. out of. I, I think that's the point of it. Now we're getting to the. This is the next section. Is the the fucked section. It's kind of where he got his nickname. You know the Satan. Right. And all those kind what of. What were names. the nicknames again? Yeah. Uh, Doctor Satan's the big one. That's probably what this episode will be called. I that's think. That's a good one. Also the de- demonic ogre Dr. and Satan, the butcher Dr. of <laughs> Paris. Doctor Satan. Doctor Satan. Doctor Satan. Doctor Satan. Oh, Doctor Satan. Doctor Satan. Doctor Satan. Dr. Satan. <laughs> Uh, he Just gave... trying to keep it light. Thank you. <laughs> he gave himself a, a new alias, Dr. Eugene, and set up what he spruced as an escape network for resistance fighters, uh, including uh, also Jewish people and others who needed to escape the Nazis. Uh, according to Cult Nation, he claimed that his network, which he called Fly Tox, which is a real modern sort of bad Fake corporation name, Fly Talks. Yeah, it does sound like yeah. like in the eighties, like a movie would like the bad 
corporation would be called Flytox. Yeah. Um, so he claimed that his network Flytox worked in conjunction with Argentinian authorities to safely transport people to South America without the knowledge of the German invaders. Uh, when the Gestapo heard about his supposed escape network, though, they infiltrated it. And apparently it was pretty easy to do because um, he was pretty open about it. He had people out there spruiking it for him, trying to get people in. Going, hey, if you... and, and, and it was quite expensive. I think the equivalent of something like half a million dollars. You pay him half a million dollars, he'd get you to Argentina. That is a lot of money. Yeah, which meant that I don't think he was able to, like a lot of people couldn't afford it, right? Um, the Gestapo heard about the network because it was pretty... Kind of an open secret. So they're, like, they're like tapping the Gestapo people on the shoulder. Hey, <laughs> you got 500 grand? I'll get you to Argentina. Away from these nuts. Nuts. Oh. <laughs> not, not, nothing. 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 No worries. <laughs> 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 Have to go nine. Nine, Ooh, nine, nine. I'm crazy. <laughs> bye bye. Oh, don't follow me. <laughs> uh, but the, yeah, so the Gestapo infiltrated it and they believed it was made up of a large number of spies, but it was actually only an operation of probably single digits. <laughs> of one. Maybe five, I read somewhere, including Petio, his wife, and then three other accomplices. Mm. Maybe his brother, who's was mentioned one time somewhere. Uh, the Gestapo jailed Petio while they investigated, and he was in jail for quite a while, but they uh, couldn't figure out what was going on. They released him. What? what? Even they are releasing him? Yeah, but apparently... They're while, crazy. Well, what they, they had while he was in jail, they tortured his accomplices and got information out of him. But it was also it was kind of like this weird scenario where all of a sudden the Gestapo were like almost the good guys in this weird scenario. They're the ones who were trying to figure out what this fucked guy is doing, but they have no idea. I think they they think he's doing something good, maybe, but he's actually also doing something bad. So, but they let him go. They they released him, and apparently it was sort of getting late in the war, and the Germans had other issues. You know, they had bigger bigger problems. Like that, what? That was, um. I think the the war was starting to turn against them. Ah, oh. yeah, no, no turkeys, for Christmas. Ah, oh. pretty bad Christmas. That sucks. So this now I'm going to explain uh, what he'd been doing a bit. Uh, what Pettyot had been doing was taking the people seeking refuge into his home. Then he'd tell them that the Argentinian government stipulated that they needed to be injected with inoculations against various diseases before they went over to Argentina. But the injections were actually cyanide. What? So we'd take their half and a million bucks. And what was that inoculating them against? <laughs> Life. Life. Oh. So he kill, kills them and then s- steals whatever money and belongings they have left. And then he'd uh, get rid of the bodies. Apparently at first he dumped them into the Seine, um, which is, the, I believe, the river in Paris. Mm, um, the Seine. The Seine, thank you. Um, but. As the Nazi occupation of Paris intensified, it was too risky for him to take the bodies out of his house to dispose of. So he began putting the bodies in vats full of chemicals to dissolve them. Um, And it's also uh, said that he also burnt bodies in a furnace in his basement. He had a couple of properties as well. So um, Doctors. (laughs) Yeah, Ugh. investment property. Yeah, negative gearing all over the shop. <laughs> I bet. I'm gonna I'm gonna read this next chunk is from that article by Michael Newton. This sort of takes up the scenario from there. On Monday morning, March the sixth, nineteen forty four, foul smoke poured from the chimney of a stylish home at twenty one Rue Le Sueur, Paris. Oh, Rue Le Sueur. That sounds very stylish. Yeah, I'm not pronouncing any of those <laughs> words right. Is is that at least say say Rue? Yeah, R-U-E? yeah. 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 It basically means street. Yeah. Uh, Neighbours suspiciously eyed the three-storey 19th century house with its private stable and courtyard, once the home of a lesser French princess. <laughs> I'm introducing yourself. Hello, I am Anastasia, a lesser French princess. <laughs> I'm a B-grade princess. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> As the hours, then days dragged on with no abatement of the noxious smoke, a neighbour finally went to complain on Saturday, March the 11th. Oh, a week later. Yeah. God, they are patient. Do you reckon either their husband or wife's like, you got to say something. you got to. No. All right. If it's still going tomorrow, now go on the weekend. Yeah. Go on the weekend. It's been gone for seven days, honey. Yeah. Get out there. That's too much. Yeah. But I guess at the same time, they have been living through Nazi occupation in their city. So I guess there's like a lot of lot of bad things are happening. But True. that does sound. Anyway. Mm. Um, so he found a note tacked onto the door and it said, away for one month. 
Ford mail to 18 Rue de Lombards in Auxerre. Police were summoned and a pair of officers arrived on bicycles. Neighbours informed them that the owner of the house, Dr. Marcel Pedio, maintained a separate residence two miles away at 66 Rue Cumartin, the one we were talking about before. Some noted the mysterious parade of callers at Dr. Pedio's empty house during the past six months, including nightly visits from a stranger with a horse cart. Some months earlier, two trucks had stopped at number 21, the first removing 47 suitcases, while the second delivered 30 or 40 heavy sacks of something unknown. Which I think is, is this chemical or this um, substance, lime, I'm guessing, lime something. Oh, that breaks down bodies? I think so, I yeah. reckon this is one of few benefits of neighbours being really nosy mm. because that's when crimes get solved. Yeah, because I, I have I had 46 suitcases. No, honey, it was 47. <laughs> I counted. You forgot the orange one. It was oh, small. Of course. I couldn't forget the orange one. Remember we talked about how odd that was that they had an orange one. Because I have some very nosy neighbours. Do you? Very, very nosy neighbours. Um, and but and you're right. The one thing is, they've no stopped one, your crime waves. Well, no, well, no one will ever break into the apartment complex because they're always just watching. Oh. Either that, or they'll watch someone do it and go, "Yeah, I saw him do it." <laughs> yeah, I was watching. That's comforting. Yeah. Hmm. So at least we'll have a description. Right. Possibly. So they'll be there for the to the news reporters. Yeah, I saw it happen. Yeah. <laughs> no, I didn't do anything about it. What do you expect me to do? Right. Reporters are always getting them to describe. What was it? What did it sound like? It's always. It was a bang. But what was it like? Like an explosion? Like a bang? What do you want me to say? I'll yeah. tell you what. What do you? What do you? What do you feed need? Feed me the line. Just feed me the line. <laughs> what do you need? You've got a script here. You're trying to get me to say <laughs> something. You need. Just tell me. I'll tell say what it. What it is? Would oh. you? If if you saw a reporter, would would you talk to him? I feel like I wouldn't. Nah. No. I don't know why, but I just feel like. No. Yeah, I don't know why that why that instinct is. It's like go away. I don't know. Talk to the cops. Yes, I talk to the police. Oh, are you stupid? I'm a narc. <laughs> I'm telling them everything. Check out this narc. I didn't see nothing. <laughs> <laughs> well, obviously that's, it depends, that's Dave. Dave. Whatever, I mean, what have you done wrong? Yeah, yeah. I didn't see nothing. <laughs> you can't make me talk. You got a warrant. <laughs> Yeah. Get out of here. That's Dave. Okay, okay, 46 suitcases. That's all you're getting yeah. out of me. <laughs> um, okay, so the, the, this um, uh, article by My- Michael Newton goes on. Um, so he, th- there's been people observing all these weird things happening. The officers telephone, so the, and, the, and the cops have arrived yep. on bicycles. On bikes, which is very cute. The very officers, Parisian. Mm. Yeah, there's a baguette in, in the basket on the front. And a little dog. Yes, and a little dog. <laughs> a French bulldog. <laughs> His name is Officer Woof. <laughs> <laughs> and he is the cutest officer on the force. <laughs> he will crack the code. <laughs> <laughs> he is a good boy. He is a good boy. <laughs> Officer Wolf. <laughs> we need him to use his little Chris hairs. <laughs> Sorry, Dave, I think that was a Belgian accent you just did. So close. <laughs> so, so close. So these two officers and their dog telephoned... Officer Wolf. Officer Wolf uh, <laughs> telephoned uh, Dr. Petio at home. He asked whether they had entered the house. You haven't entered the... <laughs> <laughs> you haven't checked the uh, downstairs cupboard, have you? You haven't gone down to the basement and seen all the bodies, oh, have you? No. <laughs> oh, did I clean up the blood? I forget. <laughs> I have forgotten. I've said too much. <laughs> <laughs> Got to make a quick call. <laughs> um, <laughs> and then he forgets to take him off hold and he's going, honey. <laughs> honey, um, can you go get rid of them bodies? <laughs> the police are on to uh, us. P- doctor, it is still I. <laughs> Woof. <laughs> 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 uh, Officer Wolf is getting a promotion after this, I reckon. This is some good work. So Officer Wolf's on the phone. I guess he's got like a hands-free sort of yeah. Madonna mic yeah, 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 yeah. set up. A headset. Uh, you'll go for Wolf. <laughs> <laughs> you call the 1-800-WOOF if you have any information. Go for Wolf. <laughs> so he, oh, that's a, that's a sitcom. <laughs> He said, "He said, have, uh, yeah, you haven't ended, have you?" Uh, they said, "No, no, we haven't." <laughs> oh God! So, so, so he he cautioned, "Don't do anything. I'll be there in 15. Uh, an hour, 
an, a half hour later with the smoke worsening and oh, no people, sign of patio. People never, they're always lying about how, how quickly they Yeah. Yeah, I, oh, I always say that. Yeah, I'm five away. I'm 15 away. <laughs> yeah, easily. My GPS is saying 15. <laughs> you're 20. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> you haven't, you're going to find a park, you know? Yeah. yeah, you haven't calculated that, have Get you? Get upstairs. Stupid, stupid GPS. Wait for the lift. That always takes mm, a while. That's right. So half hour later, he suddenly arrived. The smoke was worsening. There was no sign of him. Uh, the patrolman called for firefighters, which makes sense. Probably could have done that straight up, I reckon. But um, entering through a second story window, firemen searched the upper floors before entering the basement. They soon emerged, one vomiting. Um, oh, gastro. Awful timing. Uh, <laughs> And, and that's really contagious. I, don't, I wouldn't oh, recommend the others will yeah, end up getting it. Get away. Yeah, stay away from him. It's airborne, mate. But, <laughs> need to see a doctor. Well. Somebody get off us a wolf. He's very, <laughs> he's got a low immune system. Um, and the, the, the chief of the, uh, the fireman told the cops, you have some work ahead of you oh. after coming out of the building. Three officers next went downstairs uh, where the coal-fed stove was found burning full blast. A human arm dangling from its open door. Oh. Nearby, a heap of coal was mixed with human bones and fragments of several dismembered bodies. It was impossible to count the victims in this tableau. Tableau? This tableau of grisly disarray. Oh. So this is what I'm talking about. This is the beautiful wordsmithery of Michael Newton. Oh. He's, he's turned in an, a real fucked up scenario into a Poetry. tableau of grisly disarray. So hang on a sec. Uh, so he's left the house. Yeah. Just with that fire burning. Yeah. And he's been gone a while. Yeah. Like a week. Yeah, at least a full week. Well, that fire's been going for a week anyway. Yeah, but I think I, I don't know. If, I mean, the note on the door does that? Is that? I'm not sure if he's actually been away or if that's just he's out at the moment, or he's probably working. At, you know, he's probably getting people addicted to drugs up the road or something. <sighs> That is just wild and gross. And these are all the rich people that wanted to go to Argentina. Yeah, they, well, these are the desperate people who are, the Nazis are after, right? So Jewish people, yeah. people working for the resistance. Yeah, that is nasty. Stuff. And I, That's so fucked. I missed it. He did turn up half an hour later. No, he hasn't turned up. No, he's, still, he's on the phone. Right, um, yeah, okay, sorry. At this stage. Because imagine, like, the police are going in and he's like, uh, uh, but he's not there. Yeah, okay. No, this is the article continues. Yeah. Stunned, police left the basement. At about the time Dr. Marcel arrived on his bicycle. <laughs> he just kept riding. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> he puts on a fake moustache and yeah. keeps going. This well, is... I am Marcel's brother. <laughs> I am the good twin. <laughs> he arrived on his bicycle and remarked, this is serious. Mate. My head could be at stake. Whoa. What? He's, seen, he's realised he might be in trouble because the cops oh. are... Do you reckon? And he's been arrested like a dozen times and it's never stuck. So he's probably this thinking, is the first time he said, oh, this one's serious. This oh. could be serious. The, the heaps of bodies and evidence, this could do me in, I reckon. Then after questioning each of the lawmen to ascertain that they were French, Petio identified the basement dead as Germans and traitors to our country. So first he was like going, wait, so which side are you on? Oh, yeah, yeah. Because I'm going to tell you they're the bodies of the enemy, I guess is what he's Thoughts were. So if they were Nazis, you would have said, yeah, I'm working for you. I mean, that's what I'm inferring from that. Petio claimed to be the head of a resistance group with 300 files at home on Rue Coumartin, his other place, which must be destroyed before the enemy finds them. The French policeman, embittered by years of Nazi occupation, allowed Petio to leave. What? Whoa. Seven months would pass before they saw him again. <laughs> What the fuck? So they kind of bought his story enough, and then just in a yeah, I guess in a like a, a, a weak m- moment in the mind, he just let him go rather than going. Let well, you stay with us until yeah. we figure out yeah, what's we'll, going. Yeah, we'll accompany you to these yeah. files. Yeah, but it's the brutality of the way he's killed. I'm not saying it's ever okay to kill anyone, but like in that circumstance, when he's going, I'm it's, it's they're baddies. I'm just doing my bit. Yeah. The way that he's done it is next level fucked. That it's it you'd still be like, oh nah, I don't I don't think you're quite right. You know? 
Does that sentence make sense at all? Yeah. I, yeah, well, I think, and I re- imagine that surely they must have had the thought of. Yeah. That's a bit extreme. I mean, a firefighter vomited yeah. at the scene. Yeah. A they firefighter see, see pretty bad, bad stuff. stuff. Yep. Yeah. So that that's the end of that, that section of that article. But that I mean that, that's a great article if you are wanting to read some more. I'll have links to all these articles in the description. But that's a that's quite a good one. So uh, knowing that it would only be a matter of time before they figured out his lie, right? He's like, and they were basically onto him yeah. as soon as like those cops talked to their uh, their boss. I yeah. think their boss was like, oh, you know, we need to get this guy. But by that stage, he'd already started. Uh, he he's going into hiding. He also changed his name um, from because he was going under Doctor Eugene. Yeah, that's right. Um, this time, he's changed it to Henri Valerie. And, Valerie. And he, so many opportunities to sing in this episode. <laughs> it's a real I'm musical. loving it. <laughs> musical of death. <laughs> he uh, moved in with. One of his patients as well. So he's lying low, new name, and he also changed his appearance. He suggested fake mustache, but it's kind of what he did, grow out his beard and his hair. Yeah, great. Um, wow. Hot. I think that every time I get a haircut and I cut it short, I'm like, oh, you idiot. Grow it out. Grow it out. They're going to be on to you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, as as Valeri or Valerie, Valeri, probably Valeri, right? Uh, as Valeri, he joined the French forces of the interior and clicked quickly rose to the rank of captain. What the fuck? Wow. He must be a great talker. He has to be. Where are his wife and son? Where's his son? Mm. This is insane. Well, I think that the wife was one that I was working with him, I think. Oh, on the, yeah. But, yeah, the son might, would still be pretty young. That's the That was the thing that I – because I don't talk about the son anymore, but I I just mention it because I'm like, through all this, he's had a t- there's a toddler. Yeah. I don't know, like it, he's going off to – what's – what? A, like I guess a, heaps of – Bad people have gone home and had a family life, but it's just a wild idea. Yeah, it is. But it's like, do you ever really know someone? Yeah. Yep. Good point. Um, so he now he's captain for the French forces of the interior as, as this new identity. And later in the year, a newspaper ran a story about Petio, which included accusations that he'd worked with the Nazis apparently, and that kicked off a search for his whereabouts. And apparently to help with the search, they enlisted the services of Captain Henri Valeri. Hang on. What? Apparently. He's now been enlisted to help search for himself. Apparently. What the fuck? Whoa. What I the mean, fuck? I only read that in one place, but it was too good. Like no. it feels like some of this stuff is like <laughs> like legend like, sort of myth stuff. Yeah. But He looks like you but without a beard. So I reckon <laughs> so you are If you were him without a beard, where would you go? Yeah. Hey, don't worry, we've got um, our best uh, man on the case. This guy looks just like him. And also, Detective Woof. <laughs> yes, he's also um, been bumped up to detective, so he's in plain oh, clothes no, now. No, he's wearing a little trench coat. Yeah. He's got a little, a little uh, magnifying glass oh. and a notepad. <laughs> Yeah, but he still has to be ridden around in a, in the basket. Man, he's got a little like pedal festivals. <laughs> <laughs> he's got a little bag that has his treats in it, yeah. but but he has restraint, and he's like, "Oh no, when I'm a good boy, <laughs> <laughs> no, I do not deserve a treat. I have not been a good boy." <laughs> um, he continued hiding in plain sight for the following month. But according to all that's interesting, again, he gained so much notoriety as a resistance fighter that a French periodical ran a profile of him. When papers hit the stands, several people recognised him as Petio and alerted police that the murderer, in fact, was still in Paris. So uh, So regular people can recognise him very easily, yet the police were like, you there, give us a hand, would you? (laughs) What the fuck? Did we mention that Detective Woof has facial blindness? Oh, that's not to joke about. Yeah, I'm so sorry. Yeah, you I'm couldn't recognise him. I mean, sometimes, I don't know if you've ever had this, Matt, but if you have a beard and then you take it off, a dog might bark at you because they don't recognise yeah, him. So sure. a wolf might not recognise him with a beard. Dogs but, are, yeah. That has happened to me quite a few times. Yeah. So. so soon after he was recognised as Petio at a train station in Paris and arrested once again. No. I mean, how many times is that? This is over 10 arrests. He went to trial. 
yet again, his defense was that everything he did in his role uh, was in his role as resistance fighter for France. He admitted to killing, and I think he said uh, even he, he killed about 63. He admitted to killing 63 people, but he said they're all Germans and they're collaborators, right? It was just enemies of France. I killed, but, you know, I killed for country. Uh, he claimed no knowledge of why bodies were buried at his house, <laughs> suggesting that the other members of the Fly Tox organization must have done it, throwing them under the bus. What a prick. The judge and jury dismissed his claims, though, and he was found guilty of 26 murders and 99 other criminal charges. The sentence was... One more. One more charge. Just go, like, steal a pen or I something guess that, just that, to round it up. That gets it up to 125 altogether. Oh, okay, yeah, I'm right with that. The sentence was death by guillotine. On the 25th of May, 1945, the execution was carried out. A translation of his final words, according to a bunch of different sources, were, Gentlemen, I ask you not to look. This will not be very pretty. Well, yeah, no shit. And the, and the, the guys are man, I'm chopping heads off all the time. This, this is, is what I do. I this chop is heads off. for me. Your neck gizzards are not going to be any worse than anyone, anyone else's. else's neck gizzards. Sorry to talk in medical terms there. Yeah. I meant the goo that yeah. comes out when I cut off your neck. Um, cut off your neck. Wow. Yeah. So, yeah. Just by cutting off of a neck. Yeah. So he's, I mean, that that's a pretty definitive end to it. He's now dead. That is, his he didn't know. get out of it somehow. No, I think maybe I'll use this as a final thought. This is, a, again, from the All That's Interesting article, and this sort of just talks about what you were talking about before, Bob. It says, the inherent grisliness of murder makes it hard, if not impossible, to describe any murderer as better or worse than another. Mm. Still, Marcel Petio was truly superlative in his horror, mainly because of the circumstances and motivations behind his acts. He promised safety and freedom to those leaving Nazi-occupied France, only to strip them of their possessions and lives. So he's like, doc, that's why he started getting the names like Dr. Satan and et cetera. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's, that's very grim. Yeah, and I think that's per- the grisliness of it is... It's it's unnecessary. I mean, I'm not saying any type of murder is necessary. You know what I mean? Like it's he just goes beyond. Like they're already dead, and then he just continues to do gross things. In I suppose in a way to just like see what happens, or just for yeah, just yuck. This is the final line of the, um, and maybe this will be the final line of the report as well. Uh, but it, from the Michael Newton uh, article, he said. The blade dropped at 5.05am. According to the witnesses, Petio was smiling as his head tumbled into the basket. Oh, oh. that's so creepy. Also, why are you doing that at 5 o'clock in the morning? Who's yeah, there? Got a, who's, who's there? That? Got a big dad head chopping. Sure, there's got to be some sort of, it's like how, you know, tradespeople can't use t- power tools before 7am. Right. <laughs> it should be like that. Like, no head chopping until I've had my coffee. You're living next to a thing and all, you're like, oh, great, I've been working up by the shunk. Yeah. <laughs> and <laughs> the, ooh, you know. And yeah. the sound of a head rolling into a basket. Yeah, it's a distinctive Funk. sound. But once you hear it, you can't unhear it. Oh, you know? God. Wow, Matt, that was gross and amazing. Yeah. I'd never heard of it. And it is, I, I believe it's quite a well-known story in France, but it doesn't seem to be yeah, super wow. well-known outside of yeah. France. Never heard of him either. But wow. Kind of glad I did. Also, a little a little scared of him. Yeah, it's a yeah, just a pretty frightening guy. There's been multiple movies made about his life, like dramatizations of it. Um, and he, you know, he's one of those kind of characters that gets um, songs and yeah. um, stories and, and and books written about him. Um, yeah, so I don't know. Yeah, so we it's a weird sort of one. We haven't done a serial killer in a while. I. I think it's, again, because I find it a little bit easier when they're older stories. I feel some distance from it. But, I mean, that's I mean, it's, that's in my grandparents' lifetime. Yeah, definitely. I was just thinking that. Mm. But also, if you take out the – I think what differentiates it as well with the other serial killers is that a lot of the time with the serial killers, we tell it from the perspective of, like, the police trying to find this person and they don't know anything about them. Yeah. And this guy – like did so much that if you took out all the serial killing, you'd be like, wow, he got a lot done in a life, you know? 
And then you add the serial killing and you're like, okay. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's right. Like he had a whole political career and. Like and he was in the war and it's... then politics and then, a, uh, yeah. Um, and yeah, we, he, so he died, did I say died in 46? So um, that means he was uh, 49. Died of... Yes, that is a lot of stuff to happen in 49 years. Yeah. You know, he's achieved a lot. But he's just also done a lot of very bad things. Mm. He also literally shot himself in the foot. <laughs> so it's the kind of thing. It's like, yeah, the, the system really. F- I mean, he just kept getting away with stuff. But hey, so many years later was a bit of fun on a podcast, wasn't it? Thank you so much. Yeah, for no, listening thank to you, oh. Matt. Thank you for sharing that story with us. Yeah. And thanks to the the Patreons uh, who voted for it, um, and of course Jamie Svet. For Sved. suggesting it, Sveti. Uh, they were shena- Like I think their description was pretty, pretty accurate. Pretty accurate. Yeah, yeah. and when you said Turkmen Bashi, I was like, well, this person isn't a political person, though, are they? And then they ended up being, you know, the mayor and that other quite high-ranking role. So they were. Yeah. Yeah. Um. So what we normally do at the end of a report, we have a section of the show called fact, quote, or question. Ooh. Uh, and in it, what you can do if you're a, a Patreon supporter of the show, you can give us a fact, a quote, or a question. If you're on the, what's the section, what's the level here, Dave? The Sydney Scheinberg Rest in Peace Deluxe Package. So if you're on that uh, section, and some people are, and some people on there are not, haven't even given me one yet, you just have to message me on the Patreon. Yeah, through Patreon, that's the best way, yep. I'll, uh, I'll semi-regularly send out a, a call out for them. Um, But this week's fact, quote, or question is coming from Patreon, Ben Dragovelic, or Ben Dragovelic, and he has given us a quote. Oh, I like a quote. Yeah, we don't get heaps of quotes. We get a few, but not heaps. Oh, I'm going to live my life by this quote. You also get to give yourself a title, and Ben has given himself the title, Your Boy. (laughs) Oh, it's your boy. <laughs> your boy, Love Ben. Dragovelich. Your boy, Ben. Dragovelich. Dragovelich. Dr- 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 what's, uh, what's your boy, Ben, said? Yeah, come on. His quote is from an old colleague of his. He says, rule number one, always lead with the money. Rule number two, never not lead with the money. <laughs> Asterisk. The money in this scenario being what's most important. Oh, which is always money. Money. Dave, do you feel comfortable living your life by that? Absolutely. I feel like you already were, to be honest. Yeah. You just kind of nailed your vibe. Uh, yeah, I lead with the money. Yeah. And, and you, know you never I, not lead with the money. You know what I end with? What? The fucking money. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, you know, okay. there's a I song that. that I think... Really sums you up, Dave. It's by a little band called ABBA. Okay. And it goes a little something like this. It goes, Give me, give me, give me a man (laughs) after midnight. Whoa. (laughs) (laughs) The old switcher. I thought we were on the, I I just, I thought I was calling it right. but Oh, I I definitely could have gone with you on that too. No, but yours was better. (laughs) I really thought it was going to be. Give me a man after midnight. I thought it was going to be Waterloo for sure. (laughs) Look, they're all good. That's what we're saying. I thought it was definitely going to be about a certain battle. <laughs> <laughs> so thanks so much, uh, Ben. Uh, oh, your boy. Your boy. Good on you, Ben. And Woo! Your boy. We also. And, uh, can we just lead with the money now by thanking our most valuable patrons? Yeah. We, we love to thank our patrons at the end of the show. Jess gives us a little, um, mm. little game to play, a little name game to play well, as we thank what if we gave them an alias for when they were going into hiding? We give them a, f- a fake name. Okay. What are they going into hiding for? Could be diff- Everyone's different? Everyone's different. Okay, great. Um, we should say if you if you want to support us on Patreon, you can go to patreon.com slash pod, and you get rewards like bonus episodes on certain levels and you get shout outs and you get the fact, quote, or question and other such things. You get to vote on the topics. There's lots of different fun things. And, uh, yeah, also get into a Facebook group and other such stuff. Anyhow, let me kick it off. Could I thank, firstly, from Perth, beautiful Perth, sunny Perth, Western Australia, 
Jessica Banazak. Oh, nailed that pronunciation in my opinion. <laughs> Jessica, if you disagree, well, bad luck because Dave reckons I nailed yeah. it. Yeah, that's fantastic. And if you have mispronounced it, she was missing an accent. Okay. Yeah. Yes. It's chuck a typo. A, chuck a little ax- accent um, on the top there. And Jessica is going into hiding. She was competing in a Miss Universe pageant. Really? And she went, you know what? Nah. And she okay. left, which should be totally her choice. Yeah. But they actually have very strict contracts. Right. So she, breach of contract. But just sort of like breach, a breach reverse Miss Congeniality kind <laughs> yes. of scenario. So she's in hiding for a breach of contract. Yes. She's gone into hiding. She's just going to fly under the radar for a bit. She grown her hair out? Oh, yeah. You better yeah. believe. That pixie cut. That she was rocking. And what's her, what name is she giving herself? She's now Amber Huntington. Oh, oh great. Right. That's a good name. Good name. That's a really good name. Thank Remember you. that name. I mean, if she returns to the Miss World competition, that's actually quite a nice name. Amber Huntington. What, what's wrong with Jessica? You don't like Jessica? You don't think Jessicas can win competitions? No. Fair. <laughs> I think they can, Jess, if you believe you can. Thank you so much, Jessica. I was talking to you, not obviously anyone in the room here with me. (laughs) Um, (laughs) I'd also love to thank from Hampton in Melbourne, Victoria, Australia, Adam Tregear. Tregear, son, Tregear. Okay, I think Adam is gone into hiding because he spilt a meal in a food court. Oh. It was really embarrassing. Yeah. Okay. There was like sauces everywhere. Oh, yeah. right. A saucy meal. He made eye contact with the cleaner and was like, oh, I'm so sorry. But yeah. I, I can't deal with this right now. Yeah, he, was he ran from that shopping center. Yeah. And he's been on the run for nine months. Wow. Well, Does he it... not know that they can't identify yeah, he him? He started a new life. Okay. That seems extreme. And what's his new name? Dr. Burger. Okay. Oh, Dr. Hiding Burger. In, hiding in plain sight because yeah. he was eating a burger. Oh, oh, that makes sense. For some reason when you said like sauces have gone everywhere, I just assumed it was, I, you know what I was picturing? Like an Asian noodle dish. Oh, yeah. Mm. Well, he had that on the side. Oh, hungry boy. I told you it was a big meal. You yeah. were making me hungry. Well, wow. mm, And I, I reckon uh, based on his location, I reckon it was at Southland. Yes, it was at Southland actually. Yep. Knew it. Read yeah. about it in the news. Made all the front pages. Adam. Just go home. It's okay. Dr. Burger. The cleaner just cleaned it up, mate. It's fine. Nobody else <laughs> that, noticed. That was worse. They deal with poo and vomit. All the time. Probably. Honestly, Hoshin. there was like three other people in the food court at the time and they went, that's a bit weird that he's run off. Yeah, um, run but off. they have not thought of you since. You, Your family are worried. Just come They're home. so worried. It's okay. If you started a new family, bring them along yeah. too, I guess. Like mm. the more the merrier. We just want you home safe. The Burger Please. family. The Burger family. So thank you to Adam. Dr. Burger. Um, may I thank some people also? Oh, that would be yeah. so great if you could. I'd like to thank from Ohio. Oh, oh let me just say God's Ohio. country. Ohio. I'd like to thank Glenn Mitchell. Never trust him with two first names. What? <laughs> what? Glenn Mitchell. Matt, what's Always Glenn? Always trust the man with two first What's names. Glenn on the run from? Well, he can't. He's on the run. Well. He's gone into hiding. Yeah, he's gone into hiding. For what? Well, he went from being a top line fighter pilot. Oh. And uh, he fought one too many uh, of his comrades in the mess hall. And the last one he fought was. Johnny Johnny Johnson and Johnny, John Johnny Johnson. Jo- Johnny Johnson. Unfortunately, he was a, pr- a lowly private, as he called him, as he was, mm. as he was uh, slipping the boot in. Um, but unfortunately, Johnny Johnson's old man, Greg H. Geraldine Johnson, is uh, second in charge of the whole goddamn Sky Army. So he is in a pickle, right? And he goes, "That's it, I'm out." And he stole one of the uh, planes and he flew to. Uh, upper Ohio, oh. yeah, all the way up to the top of the state and uh, started a, a career as a, a talkback radio host. But he puts on a funny voice. <laughs> what does he sound like? Hey, you're on the radio here with me, Jiminy Gigi. Jiminy Gigi is his. I'm taking your calls. Wow. And no one suspected a thing until now, and obviously we've blown this wide open. I would listen to that show. Would you listen to Jiminy Gigi? Yeah. Jiminy here. <laughs> what? 
happening. <laughs> I'm listening. Wow, there's a lot of... Wow, as you listen... Shush, I'm talking here. God. I'll be listening in a second. It's really quite confronting to look at. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, thank God this is on radio. Yeah, yeah thank Because his face is terrifying. So Glenn Mitchell or Jiminy GG, thank you for not only your support of Do Go On, but your support of the arts on your show. Mm, thank you. Thank you. With Jiminy GG. And I'd also like to thank... What's PA? Pennsylvania. Is that Pennsylvania? Yeah. Confident. Luke Harbour. <laughs> what would you say? Luke, that? I am your harbour. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, well, if we See were that. naming like their debut albums, sure. <laughs> but we're not. That's a, that's a great debut album name. Dave. Luke, I am your harbour. What's well, well Luke? <laughs> Well on done. the run from uh, Luke is on the run. Man on the run. <laughs> uh, he, he went fishing with his best friend and what's his best friend name? Uh, sweet baby Joe <laughs> sweet and baby sweet baby Joe. Joe. Well, that's what he calls him. Uh. <laughs> and they went fishing together and they hooked onto a fish. Well, Luke will tell you he got it first. Sure. Sweet Baby Joe will tell him he got it first. But they double hooked this fish and oh then they God. pulled it in. It was like a record catch wow. for Pennsylvania. Yeah. And they got it back into the boat after like hours of battling the fish. Mm. And they battled it out yep. as to who caught the fish. I'm afraid Luke lost the battle. Right. Oh. But he stole the fish. No. And he's gone into hiding. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. With a fish that is yeah. rotting. <laughs> yeah, but, and, a, but a really big rotting fish. But what's he changed his name to while he's hiding? Uh, Diamond Tooth Chris. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's yeah, good. Yeah, that is good. I don't suspect him. <laughs> Diamond Tooth Chris. Thank you, Luke. I've already forgotten he did anything. <laughs> yeah. Did what? Well, he, I mean, he has had a diamond installed into his tooth, so when he smiles, Smart. he goes, ping. Yeah. And you go, I trust this guy. It's very distracting, and therefore people don't ask you any questions about where you've come from. Ping. Yeah. Thank you, Diamond Tooth Luke Harbour. Ah, oh, beautiful. Thank you, Luke. All right, let me thank a couple of people now. Both of them. From Australia, I would like to thank from Yo Keen, Western Australia. Yo Keen. I would like to thank Andrew Martin. Oh, another double first namer. Thank you so much, Andrew Martin. Andrew Hello. Andrew Martin. What's his story, Bob? Andrew Martin um, was playing golf. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. Well, where do we get that from? Just a quick nine holes. Your imagination is wild. Thank okay. you. <laughs> And there was an albatross on the green. Oh, wow. And Sweet. Andrew was actually, he was losing quite badly to his friend okay. Greg. The albatross really just pissed him off. <laughs> so he hit it with his golf club. He hit an albatross. He hit an albatross. That's bad. Yeah, it was very he bad. Sh- should be on the run. It was really bad. Was there video um, footage? Someone no. Kept to that? Has okay. he gone viral? That's the thing, right? So this is all been speculated by his friend, Greg. Okay. Nobody saw Andrew hit the albatross. Right. There's no evidence of it. But Andrew was suddenly gone and the albatross was suddenly gone. Is Andrew right. and or the albatross dead? No. Okay. Andrew was just like, I can't handle the heat, man. Yeah. Oh, well, if you can't handle the heat, <laughs> so you leave the golf in green. Yeah. So he... he has uh, he's currently just in hiding. He's just laying low for a little bit. Okay. We went to the shops the other day, had to get some groceries. Someone said, oh, what's your name? And he panicked and he said his name was Greg Norman. Oh, no. <laughs> That's smart. Oh, yeah. wait. And then they said, oh, like the golfer. He said, oh, no, I get that all the time. Oh, no, because that makes people start thinking about golf stories they've heard recently. Yeah, exactly. Oh, that reminds me of an albatross I heard was beaten to death oh. on a golf And he green. took those groceries and he ran. Oh, no. So now he's also stolen groceries. He's committed crimes oh. in two, two states now. <laughs> I don't think I should be allowed to play the game I came up with. <laughs> no, that's Andrew Martin, a.k.a. <laughs> Greg Norman. <laughs> yep. Thank you. Thank you Remember so much. Remember the time we tried to tweet at Greg Norman to let me do comedy on his boat? Yeah. He and we never heard never from replied. him? never replied. I really like uh, the, the moxie we showed that day, and I think it should have been rewarded. <laughs> Why didn't Greg write back? Yeah, it is weird. Maybe he's just waiting for the right time, for the right shindig on his yacht. 
Yeah, okay. I reckon I mean, you're not that. just going to have one, it's just him. I mean, well, he certainly could, but he's like, no, the people need to see yeah, this. his people will call your people, I assume. Yeah. And I hopefully that's so. me because I was the one who tweeted saying, hey, get yeah. my friend Jess on. She's yeah. very funny. Thank you, Dave. Yeah. I needed that. It just does feel a little bit like he doesn't get it. He doesn't get it, but that's his loss, not mm. mine. Well, I'll tell you someone who does get it, and that is from Adelaide, our final person to thank this week, from Adelaide, Adrian Newman. Oh, Adrian. Thank you, Adrian. New man. Oh, oh well, this works so well for yeah. Adrian. So to become a new man, what did he, why did he have to become a new man? Oh, well. I mean, it's a complex layered question. It is in some ways. In other ways, it's not um, yeah. insurance fraud. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Hey, who, did, um, who did he rip off? Oh, buddy. Oh, who yeah. didn't he who, rip who, off? Tell me the last person you want to rip off. The man. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. who he ripped off. Well, no. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, Adrian. Yeah, he did. Yeah. No, Jerry Adrian. Harvey. Jerry Harvey from Harvey Norman. Wow. Yeah. yeah. You know, I think it was the man. Yeah, wow. Well, we him all off. do. Because he, um, he, yeah, he got an insurance thing on a microwave and uh, he f- used it fraudulently somehow. Yep. So, wow. Yep. He returned it when he didn't need to. Yeah. Yep. So um, obviously initially from South Australia, but... Newman is now he's uh, he's changed his name to Junt 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 <laughs> Junt <laughs> yeah just uh, just Junt so, oh, well, um, oh. he's like it's like Adele <laughs> just Junt just Junt I'm like Prince <laughs> he's also speaking in an accent just to throw Junt. people off some yeah, just Junt is a great name J U N T Junt Junt that's what he says I'm just Junt. And yeah, he's so far so good, so got away with but it. But we don't know where he is now. He was from Adelaide. He was, was yeah, he Did was. Did he move a lot? He's well, he's he's sort of he's sort of hovering now, uh, in the air. <laughs> oh wow! But he's afraid to put his uh, put his roots down again. So it's, so far, he's just been yeah, hovering. Um, yeah, that's fair. Yeah, it is hard. He's to... waiting until it all blows over. Yeah, and then he'll, uh, he'll yeah probably land somewhere uh, <laughs> back on Earth. Because wow. he's playing at the moment, he doesn't want to lock anything in. <laughs> I'm the only one he's spoken to, so um. But oh, anyway, yeah, he's yelled at you from a height. Anyway, John, and I'm yeah. thinking there because um, <laughs> I, I, you know, I still call you Adrian, but he hates that. He's like, I'm John now, <laughs> I'm or is John. he John? Was John. He John? John. John. He really hates it when I call him John. Um, <laughs> yeah, I would too. Because his name is John. <laughs> Oh, so thank you very much to Adrian Newman, a.k.a. Junt. Adrian Junt Newman. Yes. Appreciate all that. And we appreciate all the support that everyone on our Patreon gives us. It really does make a huge difference. So if you'd like to be part of that difference, Matt said it before, go to patreon.com slash dogoonpod or hit up our website, dogoonpod.com, and there's a link right there that'll take you straight through. It's a link right there. And there's a link to how you can suggest a topic there. Mm-hmm. So if you want to... Submit a topic at any time. You just go to dogoonpod.com. And then there's also links to our Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, which are at dogoonpod. And we're on YouTube, baby. You better believe it. You better believe YouTube. it. YouTube.com slash dogoonpod. There's um, some good live episodes up there if you want to see videos of what we look like live. Yeah, and some people have been saying nice things and some confusing things about that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, never yeah. read the comments. <laughs> um, but, yeah, that brings us to the end of the episode. We will be... Back next week with another fine episode. Whose turn is it to do a report next week? Dave. That's me, baby. Looking forward to that. And, yeah, if, you, if there is still time to get involved in Thailand, if you want to come hang with us on beautiful sunny beaches. That's right. A uh, link to all of that information will be in the description of this episode and also on our um, our shows page on dogoonpod.com. But until next week, as we always say here on Do Go On, I love you, John, and John. <laughs> Laters. <laughs> Bye. Goodbye, John. This podcast is part of the Planet Broadcasting Network. Visit planetbroadcasting.com for more podcasts from our great mates. I mean, if you want. It's, it's up to you. <laughs> to you. <laughs> to you. <laughs> to you. <laughs> Tear, 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 tear.